Off the Wall Productions is proud to present Voices of the Methow. This is a series of conversations with interesting folk in and around the valley. Hey, this is Byron. I'm pleased to welcome Mel Cook, Secretary of Methow at Home, to the show. Welcome, Mel. I'm really glad to be here. Thanks. Before we begin, can you give a brief introduction for the folks who may not know you? I've uh, been here in the Valley four years. I'm a retired uh, educator, worked for the Edmond School District, had several careers. What do you call those things? Midlife crises that oh, yeah. changed the route of my life. I'm in a place that's really great to be in uh, and doing some good work with an organization that's really easy to get behind. And that's Met How at Home, huh? That's Met How at Home. Okay. Well, I looked around your website a little, and I saw that your mission is to support our members who want to age in place. So helping people stay in their homes as long as possible. That sounds like a great idea. How are you able to help pull that off? Our volunteers do all kinds of things around the house. They come in and they maybe shovel a little snow. We have some people that hurt an ankle you know, break an ankle or sprain an ankle and they can't get around for a while. So we might go in and do a little short-term meal train. We have people who have a picket or two missing on a fence and their dog is getting out and they can't chase the dog. So we'll have someone come in and nail up a couple of pickets. We check batteries and smoke detectors. You know, some people can't get on an eight-foot ladder anymore. They don't want to. So it's, it's easy enough to do for a volunteer. It's no big deal, but it's something that needs to be done. So it's one of those things we do. We help people get to appointments, doctor's appointments. Sometimes take them to the grocery store because they can't get to the grocery store because their car won't make it out of their driveway during the winter. So it just varies. There might come a time when a person will have to hire additional services from other providers to be able to stay in their home. Can you speak to that a little bit? Well, we do have some businesses that we sort of endorse. Now, this is not an official endorsement, but they're people that we know of. They're people that we know will give a fair price. They're people that are known in the Valley. So we can refer some businesses to people. Uh, That's not really our main focus, but we do have some connections. Well, Mel, it sounds like a key part of the work is to provide a means for people to connect with each other by finding common interests and providing education and information on aging with grace as well, huh? No doubt. We uh, have many educational opportunities that we provide. Um, Most of them are no cost. Uh, In fact, I would say almost all of them are no cost. They're usually held at the Cove 2, so we have a small venue that we can go to. One of the things that we do is called Let's Talk About. It's a monthly meeting, Thursday mornings, open to the public generally, Uh, usually small groups. We have an expert come in and talk about various things, such as uh, dealing with people with Alzheimer's or green burials is one that came up a while ago, which is a really interesting topic. Um, We just do all kinds of educational opportunities. Most of our volunteer opportunities and our our member service requests are in the range of an hour or two, and they will have an idea of something they need done or want done that will help them put up vegetables for the winter. So, you know, and we have volunteers that love to come in and help people get in the dirt and dig and put things together. And, you know, it's simple stuff. Uh, We're not professionals. None of our volunteers are professionals. Oftentimes they have a lot of skills, you know, we've, most of us are in that uh, age range of 60 and up, and we've gained a lot of knowledge and skills over those years, and, you know, we like to share them. We have 140 members now, and a lot of our members have been raised to help themselves and not ask for help. We have 100 volunteers who want to do stuff, so we want people to ask for help. Isolation is a huge part of aging in place. We don't want that to happen. We have one situation where a woman was feeling very lonely, needed a little social support. And we have volunteers who have signed up to be social support. That might be making a phone call. We have a program where we have a couple people that get a phone call from our coordinator or a volunteer every day as a check-in. We have one situation where a woman was feeling isolated, and so she requested someone to go on a walk with her. Well, that one walk 
ended up being a weekly walk, an ongoing weekly walk. A couple volunteered to go on a walk with this person. And they just loved each other's company. And now they do it every week. It's just a wonderful thing. We have a lot of members who live out a long road far from everyone else. They may not drive anymore. And it's too far to walk to the neighbor's house. And maybe the, the neighbor's gone all the time, right? So someone to visit. Companionship. We have volunteers who have signed up just to be companions. It's a huge part of our services, you know, making connections. We have different social events that we have. We volunteer appreciation dinner where mostly as the board members serve a meal to our volunteers to, in appreciation. We have member potlucks and different places where people just show up. We're putting together a ride coordination program so people that live in a neighborhood or a small little community can say, hey, are you going to the potluck? I need a ride. Or you might call your neighbor that's on a list that we have and say, want to go? Come on, I'll give you a ride. So it, it's just every, all these things you touched on are part of our mission. We want to bring people together. There are just so many things that we can do, and we have volunteers that want to do it. Well, you know, we could go on for a long time, but I want to... We could. I, yeah, we could. Is there anything else that you want to add or that we might have missed before we finish the conversation? Metal at Home is just a wonderful organization. And we have some real smart people, hardworking board members and volunteers who want to do good by our community. And as we all know, we have a wonderful community. And this is just another piece of it. We had a steering committee before we started a couple of years ago that looked at all the services in the valley and picked out the holes and what needed filling. And Metal at Home came out of that. These people just put hours and hours and hours of work into this. I would encourage people to go to our website, which is metalathome.org, and browse around. There's just tons and tons of stuff to see there. A lot of our members are in a generation that just don't want anything to do with computers. So 996-5844, you'll get probably Deirdre, our uh, part-time coordinator on there, who really is the heart and soul of our organization. She just knows everybody and can put things together. She's just a wonderful asset that we have. And she will talk you through anything you need talking through. You can call us. And once again, that number is 996-5844. We have live people Monday through Thursday, 9 to 3, Fridays, 9 to noon. Awesome. Like I said, it's, a, it's an easy organization to get behind. We do good work. And I'm going to say, really, our volunteers and members do good work. The board is a wonderful group to work with and have the heart and soul of angels. Beautiful. You've been listening to Voices of the Methow, an off-the-wall production. Until next time, thanks for listening.